Visualize the steelworks in a simple framework in this video. Learn how to estimate the rebars and tie wires in footings, columns, and beams here in Quantity Surveying. The given task is a simple framework of footings, columns, and beams with spans of 3.5 and 3 meters on centers. The elevation of the framework is 3 meters floor to floor height and 1 meter embedment of the footing underneath the natural grade line. The footing has a depth of 0.3 meters with size of 0.8 meters square. It is reinforced by 5 diameter 16 rebars spaced equally both ways. Columns are of size 350 by 350 millimeters with 8 D16 rebars and lateral ties require diameter 12 bars spaced at 2 inches, 4 inches, and 6 inches respectively until the center line. Beams are of size 250 by 350 millimeters reinforced with 4 diameter 16 bars, and stirrups are spaced similarly with the lateral ties. Let's start estimating the reinforcement of the footings. The number of bars for each footing is 5 transverse and 5 longitudinal, which total to 10 in each footing, multiplied by 4 footings, making 40 bars in total. The length of each bar is computed as the footing width less the concrete cover on both ends, so L turns out as 0.8 meters minus twice of 3 inches or 0.075 meters to give 0.65 meters. So the framework requires a 40 diameter 16 rebars of 0.65 meters. Next is the tie wire, which is in kilograms. Take the number of intersections to know the required length of the wire. So for four footings with 5x5 five five rebars, there are 100 intersections. If we take the standard length of each tie wire as 1 foot or 0.30 meter, the required weight of tie wire is 100 intersections times 0.30 meter upon 53 meters in 1 kilogram to have 0.57 kilograms of GI tie wire for the footings. Moving on to the columns of 8 pieces of diameter 16 main bars. The number of main reinforcement is 4 columns of 8 bars each to have 32. The length of which is computed as the height of the span that is 3 meters from top beam to the natural grade line then another 1 meter going underneath to reach the footing. This 4 meters is less than the concrete cover from the bottom of the footing and again take out twice the diameter of the footing bars, that is, from those in transverse and longitudinal directions. Then take into account the bend of the column standardized at 0.3 meter. The total length for the column rebar is 4.105 meter. Thus, column main bars are estimated as 32 of D16 mm rebars times 4.105 meters. With the main bars, we estimate the D12 lateral ties given the spacing of 2 inches, 4 inches, and 6 inches. The lateral ties are placed on a clear span of the column, and since there is no other beam to intersect the column except for the top, the clear span is computed as the whole height of 4 meters less the height of the beam on top, 
that is 0 0.35 meters. Then from the bottom, we take out the footing concrete cover, two footing rebars, and also the diameter of the column caused by the bend. So the clear span is 4 less 0 0.35 minus 0 0.075 and again less twice of 0.016 and another 0.016 to give net length of 3.527 meters. This clear span is to be divided into two to reach the center line. So the computed span is 1.7635 meters. Now distribute the lateral ties accordingly. 2 at 2 inches, giving 0 0.1 meter of the height. The next has 4 of 4 inches, making a total of 0 0.4 meter. Then the remaining height will have a lateral tie space at 6 inches, and if we place 8 of them, we get another 1.2 meters of the column. The total height we just covered is 1.7 meters and there is 0 0.0635 meters left. If this is mirrored, the remaining height is still covered by the 6 inches spacing, so we can finalize 2 plus 4 plus 8 lateral ties for the column. The total number of lateral ties in each column is twice of 14, then add the standard 3 lateral ties for the column beam intersection on top totaling to 31 lateral ties in each column. Multiply these by 4 to have the total lateral ties on 4 columns, that is, 124 pieces of D12 rebars. After the number of lateral ties, we solve for the length of each bar, and with the square column, we can compute it as 4 times the column width less twice of the concrete cover, then add the two hooks. The length is then 4 times 0 0.35 less twice of the 2 inches concrete cover on both ends. Then add 2 hooks of 2 inches to give 1.1 meters. The estimated lateral ties can then be completed as 124 diameter 12 rebars by 1.1 meters. For the tie wires, we still have to take the intersections and that four columns of eight main bars times 31 lateral ties, which shows 992 intersections. With the foot length, we can have the weight by multiplying 992 with 0 0.30, then divide it by 53, resulting to 5.62 kilograms of number 16 GI tie wire. Next to estimate are the beams. With the different spans, we take two lengths of rebars. Starting with the 3 meter span, the length of the beam is the on center span of 3 meters plus the two bands of 0 0.30 meter each. Take note that the beam should be anchored sufficiently to the column, so the length of the rebar does not consider the clear span but the on center length. For the second span of 3.5 meters, the rebar length is 3.5 meters plus twice of 0 0.30, giving 4.1 meters. So to summarize, the main beam rebars are 8D16 by 3.6 and 8 pieces of diameter 16 rebars of 4.1 meter length. For the stirrups, although there would be only one length, there would be two different numbers for the two different spans. For the 3 meter bay, the clear span to place stirrups are computed as the on center span less twice half the column size, that is, 3 minus twice of 0 0.35 divided by 2, or that is 2.65 meters. Take the center line by dividing 2.65 into 2 to get 1.325 meter. Now spread the stirrups with their spacings, that is twice of 2 inches to give 0 0.1 meter, 4 of 4 inches to have 0 0.4 meter. Then the remaining length can take 5 6 inches spaces, leaving 0 0.075 meter near the center line. If we mirror 0 0.075 meter, that would be 0 0.15, which is the design spacing for the stirrups. 
so no need to add anything more. The number of stirrups for the 3 meter beams is computed as twice of the estimated number plus twice of the column beam intersection, one from both ends of the beam. So 2 times 11 plus 2 times 3 is 28 for a beam. Having two 3 meter beams in the framework, we take the total number of stirrups as 56 D10 bars. Next is the beam of 3.5 meter span. Just as how we estimated the 3 meter beam earlier, we also start with the clear span as the on center span less twice of half of the column size. That's 3.5 less 0 0.35 divided by 2, turning out as 3.15 meters. The center line comes out as 1.575 meters from the division of the clear span and two stirrups space at two inches are placed, four stirrups of four inches, and also seven stirrups of six inches. The remaining span after the placement of stirrups is 0 0.05, so we are within the designed spacing. The total number of stirrups for a beam is twice of 13, plus the stirrups on the column beam intersections on both ends, so that's twice of 13 plus 2 times 3, giving 32. For two beams, there would be 64 pieces of D10 bars. For the stirrup lengths, the length is computed as twice of the beam width less two concrete covers, plus twice of the beam depth less two concrete covers, then add two hooks of 2 inches. That would be twice of 0 0.35 less 2 times 0 0.05 and another 2 times 0 0.25 less twice of 2 inches plus 2 hooks of 2 inches. The length is computed as 0 0.9 meter. Finally, the stirrups can be completed as 56 plus 64 of D10 by 0 0.9 meter and that's 120 of D10 by 0 0.9 meter. The tie wire starts with the intersection of four main bars multiplied by 120 stirrups giving 480 intersections. With the foot length, the weight of the tie wire for beams is 480 intersections times 0.30 meter divided by 53 meters, yielding 2.72 kilograms of number 16 GI tie wire. Thank mm -hmm. you.